think it is important to express that WMB is not anti-wind or pro-wind. We are so solely interested in protecting the ability of residents to receive the broadcast equipment they have relied on for years uh, to give them the information and content that they both need and desire. Um, so with that in mind, I, I looked at the draft. I want to thank you for considering uh, certain things I've submitted. I see uh, some of those things listed in here. Uh, on page nine, I would just encourage you um, to, uh, as you discuss, and vote on that to include the second point 21. Um, is that, uh, as I submitted in the letter, that addresses the, uh, the scientific realities of the effects of uh, wind turbines. Um, it does not, uh, it doesn't draw conclusions by just adopting this language. It just requires that the studies be conducted. So it's not saying what the effects will or will not be. It's just requiring that those studies be conducted to determine what the effects are. Um, I see a couple of things underlined in there. I assume those are being discussed between Palmyra Township, Glenway County, uh, one mile, two and a half miles. Um, I would just encourage you to, to uh, consider all the turbines in Glenway County uh, as I express the, uh, the cumulative effect needs to be considered. You know, there's been a lot of talk tonight about Riga, Ogden, uh, you know, all the newspaper articles talk about this, um, the whole area that you're being affected. Uh, and, and we're not just dealing with um, one turbine company or necessarily even just this one period in time. This could happen again uh, five years from now if someone else wants to come and put a turbine in. So therefore, I feel it's important to consider the total cumulative effect because, you know, if there's a turbine that, so to speak, breaks the camera's back by removing someone's reception, um, if you don't consider the cumulative effect of that, uh, someone could lose their reception or a large area could lose their reception without having to conduct that study to determine if that can happen. Uh, also, I see one mile or two and a half miles. Again, as I expressed in the letter, I would encourage two and a half miles. That's based on the uh, the, the uh, information that's presented by uh, Les Polinsky, excellent RF expert on May 17. Uh, again, in the paragraph we have, I encourage you to go with my way to again for the same kind of effect reasons. Um, as far as the 35 dB, and I heard uh, uh, it presented to talk about the 10% difference. Uh, the 35 dB comes from the FCC. Standard. That is the FCC standard for, for the necessary signal level for a good quality video signal. Uh, that was even presented by uh, Mr. Polinsky on May 17th. So that is a accepted industry standard. Uh, as I'm sure you're aware with digital TV, either you get a signal or you don't. So with a 10% buffer, uh, you don't necessarily get the signal. And uh, on page, on the other one, page 13, I would encourage you to make sure you adopt the second uh, point F that also includes the signal degradation, because that's different than electronic negative variance. Thank you. Good evening, my name is uh, Jamie Schmitz. I'm the president and CEO of WLB TV40. Uh, our history uh, here, uh, we've been coming to meetings for quite a while now, and uh, we've also presented letters, uh, not only representing WLB, but also uh, we present letters from the National Association of Broadcasters, National Religious Broadcasters, the Michigan Association of Broadcasters, and I can tell you, uh, we haven't presented a letter from them, but the Society of Broadcast Engineers are, are very pleased that we have been providing leadership on this issue. Uh, first, I want to thank the uh, uh, Planning Commission for all your hard work and um, for receiving so many documents over the months and studies from WLMB. Um, I just want to clarify uh, the public comments as we're supposed to address the chair. Dr. Larry, I do have a question for you. Has this document, this is the first time I've seen this tonight, has this been under legal review? Has um, your, so it has? No, it hasn't. It's, it's basically what you sent us. Okay, so. but I mean, has the whole document, has the entirety, has it yeah. been looked at by an attorney? Yeah. Yeah. So he's saying uh, if you have some choices, it's really the planning commission's choice. Nothing would, right? Nothing would be illegal on the face. Uh, legal. If nothing would be illegal as written. You could choose A or B, right. and it'd be perfectly fine. I think I want to clarify that. Um, how much time do I have left? Thirty seconds. Oh my. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, knowing that uh, Exxon and John Bullock asked for two revisions. The second one being 10% uh, signal strength change. If you take 35 dB 
we take that down 10% to 31 half dB. Uh, you now have gone below the grade of what's required for a converter box or a digital TV set to be able to provide a good quality signal. It doesn't mean that you won't get a signal maybe intermittently, but it does mean that you're not going to get a good quality consistent signal. So if you like watching TV shows with five or six minute gaps in them, then that would be a good standard to adopt. If you like watching consistent video streaming, then uh, you should reject the 10% signal degradation. That is really just uh, quite shocking that that would be in there. Um, once that would be passed in the law, uh, there would be, they could hide behind the ordinance and anybody that would be impacted by that would not have to be remedied. Uh, you have heard um, Mr. Bullock and Mr. Dumering on multiple occasions talking about how my town should be in the fringe area. 10% uh, would knock out most of the TV signals from Toledo. We're not so much concerned about the VLB signal because of our proximity. Uh, as uh, Mr. Jinks pointed out, in analog television you had the opportunity to choose the signal level that you're able to watch. So if you watch something snowy, you can do that. And if you watch something but in digital, it's either all there or not. And I uh, just want to encourage you, as Mr. Ching said, to adopt the language uh, that he suggests that you adopt. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Okay, Kevin, thanks. Yeah, yeah. What you want? <laughs> <laughs> you want five minutes or six minutes? Five, six. 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 Okay, give him six minutes. Good evening. My name is Kevin Martis, 11917 Wagner Road, Wright Township. Uh, I'm a member of the IICC, one of the directors. Uh, a number of our members and uh, interested parties will be bringing documents to enter into evidence tonight, which will establish the factual basis for the uh, things we're uh, wishing to see added to your ordinance. Uh, tonight I'm going to go a little off the reservation and speak more on my own. Last week the United States had its credit rating lowered for the first time in history. For three years, our news coverage has been filled with stories of massive debt, outrageous deficits, out-of-control entitlements, and corporate welfare to pet industries. Do it long enough, and for enough special interest groups, you have collapse. Our derating by Standard & Poor's may very well be the beginning of the collapse. Why do I bring this up at a public zoning meeting? Simple. Elmira Township has been asked to expend your tax dollars to create a zoning ordinance for one of the most ridiculous uses of taxpayer money yet conceived, green energy. If you don't believe me, how about a few facts, a few statistics? Subsidies, these are new numbers as of 2010. Coal-fired energy is subsidized at 64 cents a megawatt hour. Natural gas, 63 cents. Nuclear, $2.78. Big wind, $52.43 a megawatt hour. Worse yet, in 2010, big wind received nearly $5 billion in subsidies, more than all other sources combined, yet they produce less than 2% of our energy. All this while we're borrowing 40 cents of every dollar we spend from China and other foreign countries, many not friendly to our nation. And don't be confused. Wind has nothing to do with dependence on foreign oil. Less than 1% of our electricity comes from oil. When it comes to electricity, we are already energy independent. How about carbon dioxide? The National Research Council concluded in 2007 that even under the most optimistic projection, building all the hundreds of turbines projected, U.S. CO2 savings by 2020 will be a trivial one and three quarters percent. And I would say that the hot air that the Wendy's bring into town might offset most of these savings. What about jobs? I need to insert a comment here. The wind developers like to accuse the IICC of being anti-farmer. This is laughable on the face. Too many Lenawee County farmers are opposed to wind development too. So back to jobs. How about a pro-farm source for my data? How about the Iowa State University Center of Agricultural Law and Taxation? Can you even get more pro-farmer than that? Their report of June 20, 2011 states that Spain lost 2.2 jobs for every one job they created in the green energy industry. And the cost? $100,000 per green job per year. Another cost? The high price of energy caused by their green energy program drove Spain's largest steel manufacturer out of the country to pursue cheaper energy. And local tax revenue? You can do see the numbers. Uh, Marty Marshall brought them to Ogden Township. Just going to say, you'd be better off to pass a small road millage uh, than what you're going to get from 15 turbines. And your roads will still connect friends rather than enemies. And to our local farmer friends, the Center for Agricultural Law and Taxation offers another warning. Every wind lease the center has ever reviewed was, quote, inadequate, unfair, and offers limited economic benefit to the landowners when compared to the revenues generated and the tax subsidies received by large-scale wind energy developers, unquote. 
Iberdrola has one lease that extends out to 180 years. That's like selling your farm for $15 an acre. Farmers, before you sign a lease for Pete's sakes, hire a lawyer. Now tonight you've heard a lot of testimony and we'll hear more about how to safely site 493 foot tall wind turbines in your township. And as the former vice chairman of the Ragged Planning Commission and lead architect of much that our ordinance includes, I will state here unequivocally that the draft ordinance you have before you does not, in my humble opinion, offer anywhere near adequate protections for your people. But that is your call, not mine. But the statistics I quote from the very pro-farmer Center for Agricultural Law and Taxation make it very clear. The issue is not really how to safely site these devices in Palmyra Township. I believe the real issue for us as American citizens is, is the financial risk, the financial risk the turbines pose to our economic way of life, the noise and property value loss associated with these monsters, coupled with the destruction they cause to the social fabric of our communities, and all this for no meaningful impact on global climate change should tell us that heavily subsidized wind industrial wind turbines cannot truthfully be safely sited anywhere in the United States of America. Thank you.